Hello again, this is Gary Arched on the Tobacco Road. I'm here today with Ernesto Perez Carrillo, one of the foremost cigar makers of modern times, his daughter Lisette, and his son Ernesto Perez Carrillo III. To save time, we're gonna call him Ernie. Ernesto spent three, 10 years with General Cigar after selling his company to them in 1999. His famous brand, La Gloria Cubana, continues to be made by them, and after spending 10 years, Ernie retired at the tender age of 57? 50, yeah. 57. Uh, the interesting thing to me, Ernie, Ernesto, is that when you retired or sold the company, one of the reasons you told me you sold it is that the kids had no interest in the cigar business. That's correct. And yet here we are with Lisette, a successful transactional lawyer, and Ernie, a career in uh, private equity, and you're now all three in the cigar business. How did this come about? What well, changed their mind? I, actually, you know, when, uh, when I decided to do this, um, originally my idea was to become a provider of cigars for boutique brands. <clears throat> you know, now most of the boutique brands at that time are made in, or they're, they're still being made in Nicaragua and Honduras. So I figured there was an opportunity to make some of these boutique brands in um, Dominican Republic. And, you know, needless to say, I had a lot of uh, good feedback from, uh, you know, a lot of people that were interested in, in doing something with me down there in Dominican. But as we, as we got closer to that time when I was leaving, I started taking uh, Lisette and Ernie to meetings, you know, different meetings that I had with uh, General Cigar. And, uh, you know, they just became interested. So they said, look, rather than you do that, why don't you come out with a brand uh, of your own? And I said, well, you know, that's easier said than done because the fact is that I won't have time, you know, to do marketing, sales, collect money, and invoice, and all that type of stuff. So uh, they said, well, you know, uh, you know, we'll you know we'll come in with you uh, if you decide that you want to do it with your own brand. So that's how the whole conversation started, and little by little, you know, I saw that they started getting very interested in the project, uh, and that gave me only more uh, enthusiastic in doing this. You know, coming out with our own brand. So the first brand that I was going to come out with, and this is where the problem started was uh, La Alianza, which is the name of our factory in Dominican. And right away, you know, they talked me out of it. So I said, now I know that they're really interested in getting into it. <laughs> Before, you know, everything that I told them was yes, yeah, yes, that, you know, once I saw that they started getting, you know, questioned my, uh, my, uh, questioning you right, my, right, my genius. I said, well, you know, now, now it's time to really get serious about this. So, you know, we all sat down, we talked, um, and pretty much, you know, we, each one of us has a, uh, a, a position in the company whereby, you know, Lisette is, is in charge of the operations, finance, you know, legal and all that. Ernie's in charge of all the marketing and sales. And I'm in charge of making the cigars. So, you know, needless to say, you know, working with your family, uh, the trust that I have, you know, and them makes it a lot easier for me to really concentrate on, on uh, making cigars in the Dominican Republic. Ernesto, this has always been an industry of family businesses. In fact, I would say that the large corporations, the corporate cigar entities, are not the people that are making uh, the very popular cutting-edge cigars today. Well, you know, uh, to a certain degree, you know, that's, you know, there's, is there's some truth in that because, you know, I think people nowadays want to associate with a, with, a, with a face, with a figure. But uh, I have to say that, you know, thanks to these big corporate companies, you know, this industry is as strong as it is. And the reason I'm saying that is because, you know, they invest a lot of money. Uh, they keep a lot of people working, not only cigar makers, but also, you know, the people that grow the tobacco. And so we, we need those big corporates to, to be very strong and, uh, and uh, you know, keep producing cigars and investing money, in, not only in stores, but in the fields also. How did you decide between you what 
your various responsibilities were going to be, or did it come naturally? No, I think it's one of those things that kind of happened naturally. You know, at the very beginning, we we're kind of all involved in all the decisions, and even the sales and the marketing, even though that's my main responsibility, you know, I hardly make a decision without consulting both of them. Uh, so it's one of those things, she just, she happened to be here in Miami, and I was still living in New York, because uh, my wife's a teacher there, and we're waiting for her to finish up before we move down. Uh, so it's one of those things, being there in New York, uh, we're working with an ad agency in New York, um, you know, obviously a lot of the big media companies are based out of there, so it's kind of one of those things just happen naturally, but the same token, we all help each other out with everything. And Lisette, you're dividing your time between your law practice and, and your duties to the company? No, I'm no longer dividing my time, actually, oh. since um, I think it was last summer. So as of 2009 summer, I am fully committed and employed with, with our company.